Hey friends, it's Kate from Venison for Dinner and I'm gonna show you our three favorite summer drinks. Refined sugar free, of course. Summer means we want cold, delicious drinks. Problem is, most of those that you buy are just laden with refined sugars. You're lucky if it's only sugar and not other weird things. So what's a family to do when they want cold drinks, but refined glucose, fructose, corn syrup, whatever, are just not on the list of things they want to regularly consume. We make our own. Let me show you our three favorite summer drinks. First, I have to wipe up some honey off the counter that a kid spilled making a PB&J. The first one we're gonna make is iced coffee because you're probably an adult watching this, so let's just go with the best first. I will tell you, we're gonna make iced coffee iced tea, and honey sweetened lemonade. These are all as streamlined as possible, friends, because if it's not streamlined, it's probably not gonna become part of your routine. And I want health-giving summer drinks to be part of your routine, okay? So, two-quart jar, and finally ground coffee. Use whatever your favorite coffee is to drink, and we're gonna use a cup. The next tip is an easy one. Fill it with water. Lid on and it's just gonna sit on the counter. And this is called cold brewing coffee. And you want a cold brew coffee because cold brewing coffee gives you a less acidic coffee. It's nice. So you're gonna leave it on the counter. You're gonna shake it a couple of times, but don't shake it before you're gonna strain it because if you shake it before you're gonna strain it, it's not happy. So after 24 hours, we strain it. I like to just get another two quart jar and this is a tea strainer that we use. It fits in a mug, but it also fits in a jar. And if you haven't shaken this, it will nicely strain. There's gonna be a bit of sludge in the bottom of this jar. Don't try and get every last little bit out. Just that sludge just, just goes in the chicken bucket, okay? Now let me show you how to make one. You can take your leftover coffee that's left in your pot and chill it and keep it in the fridge and proceed from here forward. But I highly recommend, like at this time of year, we don't even drink hot coffee, we only drink iced coffee. So we just make this and keep it in the fridge. Let me show you how to make the best iced coffee ever. We're gonna start with some cold brew from the fridge. We have a pint jar, obviously make more if you want, but this is what I'm showing you. We have salt, maple syrup. Maple syrup is my favorite sweetener for this. Honey, Honey is gonna just like, kinda just pool to the bottom. Any granulated sugar is not gonna do well. You need a liquid sugar that dissolves well. So, we got some milk, we got some nice creamy raw milk. You could also use like a half and half, 10% coffee cream. I recommend something nice and fatty. And we have ice. So we're gonna do, I find three ice cubes is nice. Three ice cubes, equivalent to a fat pinch of salt. I like about a teaspoon of maple syrup, but you do that to your taste, okay? And then coffee-wise, this is the thing that gets people. Put your fingers against the jar, like you're measuring whiskey, right? Three fingers. You can do more if you want, okay, guys? Like, do what you want. If there's only a bit of coffee left in here, we're just gonna use it all, okay? Again, I didn't shake it because there still is some sediment in the bottom, so don't shake it. Now we top this up with nice creamy raw milk. Oh yes, friends, oh yes. Now, the last step is important. You gotta shake it like it owes you money. My kids told me no matter how quiet I walk, my bangles always jangle and they know it's me coming. So, shake it like it owes you money. Next step is optional, but to be honest, I don't know a way around it. When you take a sip of your magic elixir, 
you always do that. You're like, ah. shoulders raise up to your ears. Ah. Mm. It's like doing this when you put mascara on. You just can't help it. So let's make iced tea next. When we make iced tea, there's three different ways that we make it. Number one is with Adagio tea. They have these iced tea bags. These are my favorite. Um, they're not organic, but they use pretty high quality ingredient, uh, ingredients. As far as additives in tea and such, I'm kind of a, like some of them, like David C, I cannot stomach. Me and some of my kids are canaries in a coal mine. If there's something weird additive, we can tell we get a stomachache. So we don't get a stomachache from any Adagio tea. These huge tea bags. They say they make one quart this size. No, we make an entire gallon jar with one of these. So they're about a dollar each and they make an entire gallon. We love these. So I'm going to make the white tea peach. Yes. Delicious. So I'll put that in the big jar. So you can also just use your standard tea bag. So I have standard black tea. This is just like grocery store black tea. I'm going to put one in. And then I have this Tetley. Um, this is a peach ginger dandelion. I'm going to add two of these. So we have those three tea bags in there. The last way that we're going to make this is loose leaf. So I do have a big strainer that fits in this, but I can't find it. The other thing I have is these from Tupperware not affiliated with Tupperware, but this strainer thing goes in the top and this goes here. And Marius loves these. I make mint tea quite often for him in these and he drinks it straight from the jug. But I have a few odds and ends of different loose leaves that I want to use up. So I have this one from Farmhouse Teas and it's mint, cinnamon, orange peel, cloves. I think it'll make an interesting tea. So we're going to add that in and I think I'm going to do half in one and half in the other. Just remember when you make iced tea, you need to add more tea than you would if it was cold tea or to get, sorry, if it was hot tea to get a good flavor. Now to all of these, I'm going to add some honey. I like using honey because I'm going to be using warm water anyways, so it will dissolve well. I'm going to add about a quarter cup to each of the gallons, but then only these are less. So only a couple tablespoons worth in these. Next, we're gonna add some lemon juice. You can add fresh lemons if you have them, but we just buy like a case of this lemon juice. I add a good squirt to the gallons. I'm gonna link the recipes for all these things. They are all on my blog. I also have an Adagio tea coupon for you. I will link, you can get $5 off your first order. So I will also tell you some of our different favorite Adagios. Okay, salt is next. If you're wondering why salt, it's because one of the reasons that makes store-bought drinks so much more delicious, they add salt for flavor. And when you're drinking, when you're consuming a diet that's primarily homemade things, your sodium consumption is so much less than if you were, you know, buying all these things. Salt also helps your electrolytes. This is a non iodized sea salt, inexpensive, but it doesn't have weird additives or other things in it. One of my favorite Adagios, this is an apricot green tea, blood orange. This is black tea, white tea, peach, spiced apple chai, there's a blue mango that has butterfly pea flowers. We're all out of it, but it's so pretty and the kids love it. Um, we also have a black tea mango that's delicious. This next step is where you need to do some thinking. Our tap water is perfectly potable and I trust our hot water tank. So I do about half hot water, stir to dissolve everything, and then fill up the rest of it with cold water. You, this speeds it up so it will be ready by, you know, this afternoon because I'm making it in the morning. If I did all cold water, I'd want it to sit in the fridge at least 24 hours. If you want to speed it up, 
You could also just do some hot water from the kettle, maybe a quart of water in your gallon jar. Let it sit 15, 20 minutes and then fill it up the rest of the way with cold water. I like this way, it works really well for us and it means that we can just do it and put it away and forget about it until we're ready to drink it. It got loud in here, my in-laws showed up, so you're getting a voiceover now. We're gonna make lemonade next. We use just again, bottled lemon juice and this is because this is so available and easy for us to use, to buy a big case of, and we're making honey lemonade right now. I love honey lemonade, it's an excellent electrolyte you need more honey in lemonade versus iced tea because the lemon juice is quite sour otherwise. Like with all the drinks I made, we're now adding a bit of salt. This is non-iodized sea salt and we gotta get that spoon to mix it in. Now, this is called five minute honey lemonade. It's ready to drink in five minutes. You can also use this method for when you do iced tea. We're doing just a bit of hot water to dissolve if you were doing iced tea, you would want to let it sit 10 or 15 minutes so that the tea could steep. And then we're going to fill it up the rest of the way with ice. And it's pretty much instantly ready to drink. I know you can buy lemonade, like those drink powders or iced tea drink powders. Friends, these, these are not, these are not real food. These are flavored sugar water. And I'm just not down with them being a regular thing consumed in our house. So if you're having lemonade or iced tea in our house, it's the real deal. And maybe if you live somewhere where lemons just grow on trees for you, you don't consider this the real deal. Also check out my father-in-law's um, on that right there. He has full sleeve tattoos. Anyhow. <laughs> That was a bit of a tangent. So I'm just doing about halfway with iced tea and then with ice cubes and then fill it up the rest of the way with cold water. So we're just gonna fill it up with again, cold tap water, fill it up the rest of the way, add a lid and give it a gentle shake. And then friends, it's already ready to drink. So what I love about honey lemonade, this five minute honey lemonade recipe is that if you've got last minute or impromptu guests and you really want to serve them something cold and delicious to drink this is so fast unlike the iced tea that needs to steep this is just so fast you can just pop inside make this bring it out serve your guests i'm wearing a sweater because we've cooled down our house so much overnight that it's actually cold in here but i assure you it is going to be a hot day today However, even when it's hot days, we still get cold nights here in the north. So that's really nice, because then you just open up all the windows and then it's nice and cool in the house. So I wanted to show you a couple of different iced teas. Here is the white tea one. It's obviously a lot lighter. And yes, I just leave the tea bag in there because when you're cold brewing, the tea doesn't get bitter. If you're using boiling water and it would sit in boiling water and to sit warm for hours and hours, yes, you would end up with bit. And this is a herbal one. I can't remember if this is wild strawberry or passion fruit. Either way, it's fun. Last night we were at a birthday party and I like to bring a cooler and it was a birthday party with hot dogs. So we brought our own hot dogs because we have some sensitive stomachs in our house, so we get, yeah, we need our ones made from our butcher. But I brought a couple jars of iced tea, and I did this because it's so nice to have a low sugar, refined sugar free option for kids to have. We're playing by the lake, it's hot, they're all stoked, come drink some. But I do wanna give a couple caveats here. Number one would be that I actually use even less sugar, honey, than the recipe calls for these days. Um, our sweet tooths in our family are not so sweet anymore. You know, the farther you step back from regularly consuming standard diet, the less sweet you need, so to speak. Anyhow, not that our kids don't still love sweet stuff, but we just find it doesn't need to be as sweet for us to enjoy it. So, if you were making it for people who are you, kids who are used to drinking juice and such, you might want to increase your sweetener. The second point being, if you are making a bunch of it, 
or if you are making it for a crowd that doesn't care what sort of sweetener it is. They don't care that you used honey or maple syrup. Some nice freshly wiped kid boogers. <sighs> honey obviously costs more than sugar. So if you're making it for a crowd that doesn't give a rip, I'm not gonna judge you if you use sugar because there's always a point where you need to pay attention to your budget. And if using sugar over honey is going to help your grocery budget when you're serving a crowd, then I am in support of that. I sometimes do. If I'm making like four or five gallons to bring somewhere, I will use organic cane sugar and bring that versus when we're making it for our family, we use honey. Unless we're really low on honey, then I might use sugar, but I was able to buy a bunch of local honey this spring, so it's honey in all our iced tea for us. Everybody has a favorite jar to drink from. If you don't have a favorite jar, you're lying. Um, this is my one of my favorite drinking jars. Multiple reasons why. It's larger than a pint jar, so a pint jar would only be to about here, so you have more capacity. It's skinny, so nice to hold. Small mouth, nicer to drink from. This is my favorite style of drinking jar. It's, these are technically like pasta sauce ones, I think. I mean, is it even a farm, friends, if you don't have electric fencing stuff on your counter? Okay, look at the color. The fun thing about how colorful these iced teas are is that kids who are used to drinking juice are gonna be excited by the color of these. And I've already changed because it's warming up. Anyhow. One funny thing that I didn't anticipate was that like when I bring it somewhere, I'm like, oh, it's iced tea. People who know that I make it will be like, it's homemade iced tea. And I'm like, Oh right, I forget people use that powder stuff. That's not iced tea, okay? If you're if you're drinking that and calling it that iced tea, that's sugar water. It does not deserve the title of iced tea, okay? <laughs>